and you can see the numbers have declined significantly. What I'm thinking about doing now with this six spawn, and if you're familiar with Lake Tanganyika cichlids, you will recognise, or hopefully recognise what these fish are. G'day guys, Jason here. Welcome back to my fish room. So in this week's video, we're gonna be doing my June 2021 fish room update tour. So let's just get straight into the video. So the aquarium most of you guys probably want an update on is this one. And this is my brand new Neolamprologus Leilupi Aquascape. Here's what the Aquascape looked like before I put the Leilupi in. And obviously this is what it looks like now. <laughs> Pretty crazy how much excavating the Leilupi have done in the last two weeks. If you can see on the left there, rocks have kind of fallen down and that's because the male and female have been doing a lot of digging. You can probably see on camera the male hiding on the right, his head just poking out there. Their behavior has really changed since I first put them in the aquarium. When I first put them in the aquarium, obviously over the last, over those first few days, the male was kind of harassing the female, but I'm glad to say that their bond has reformed. You can see from the footage here, both the male and female uh, courting and being really close and uh, coming into contact with each other. And the male isn't chasing the female away anymore. So. And I actually suspect that they may have spawned already in this aquarium. I noticed that suddenly the female's gut looked a little hollow. So they may have spawned, I'm not too sure. I haven't seen any fry, I obviously can't see the eggs. But you see the female there on the left poking her head out. And that's where I believe they may have spawned. I'm not too sure though. Um, if they have, fantastic. If they haven't, it's all good. They will spawn eventually because the pair have formed their bond again. But yeah, this tank is looking quite different to how it looked when I first put the Leilupi in here. Uh, the, the rocks are starting to form a little bit of algae growth on them as well, which I don't really want. I'd love to put some bristlenose catfish in here with the Leilupi. However, these Leilupi will just attack the hell out of those bristlenose catfish. So I don't want to stress any bristlenose catfish out or potentially kill any. So I'm just gonna have to bear with it and uh, let this tank uh, evolve. So yeah, guys, that's the update with this aquarium. And this is my Gilidochromus regani tank. These guys featured quite heavily in my in-depth species profile that I released a couple of weeks back. If you haven't seen that video, you can watch it right here. And in that video, you can see how small the fry were. Uh, they, they've grown quite a bit in the last few weeks. They're now pushing almost one inch and they're starting to develop the horizontal barring that regani typically have. When regani fry are newly hatched, they have vertical barring and then they slowly transition into their adult markings, which is the horizontal barring. So these guys are going quite well. So this is the largest spawn to date that the adults have had. Typically what they've been having is a max of 20 fry per spawn. And now with this, I suspect there's over 50, probably 60 fry in the one spawn. Really, really happy with that. I was starting to think that the adults, they wouldn't have a larger spawn more than 20 fry. Uh, but this has proven that to be uh, incorrect and their spawn sizes are getting bigger and bigger as the adult pair or trio now uh, mature. And I thought I'd show you guys this tank and how it's going. These are my white Altolamprologus calvus, the oldest fry that I have. And you can see the numbers have declined significantly, but that is not because of deaths. Thankfully it's not, uh, touch wood it is because I have been selling them at the cichlid auction. So I have quite a few still in here. I suspect around 40 left. And they're starting to, the largest ones now are starting to push the two inch size. You can see in the center of frame there, there is uh, quite a large mound of pool filter sand. That is some of the males, uh, they are digging and starting to create territories in this aquarium. However, they really can't do that too much. Their aggression is really suppressed because of the sheer amount of calvus that I have in this tank. I wish I could put them into a larger grout tank, but I just don't have the room at the moment. So I'm relying on selling these fish, getting the numbers down, so I don't stunt the cichlids growth. Because if you overstock your aquariums, you can, and while your fish are growing up, you can stunt their growth. So I'm really, really trying hard not to do that with these fish because I absolutely love them. The other thing is I just love looking at this aquarium. I've said it many times in my other videos, it's, I, I really wish I could keep all the calvus because they're just a stunning looking fish. And this is one of my favorite aquariums in my entire fish room. And just watching them school and swim around together is just, just really relaxing and nice to see. I love their unique body shape. It is quite interesting. And yeah, just seeing them school and shoal together 
Uh, there's something mesmerizing about watching them swim around in their aquarium. Considering I'm showing you these guys, I might as well show you their breeding pair that I have that spawned these guys over a year and a half ago now. Now these guys have featured quite heavily on my channel and they are my white Autolampologus calvus breeding pair. The reason why I'm showing you them this month is because they've spawned again. The female is in the shell on the left and this is the male, he's guarding the territory. And apologies for the really dirty aquarium. When these guys are spawning, when they're preparing to spawn and when they have spawned, I do not touch this aquarium. I don't wanna stress them out at all, so I just let it be. I try to put up with the algae that's on the glass. I don't let it worry me. And I just let these guys relax, not stress them out at all. I don't even like being in front of the aquarium for too long. I just let them do their thing. I know that the fry are gonna be hatching in the next few days and coming out of that shell. And I'm actually thinking of changing what I do uh, with raising the fry. If you've seen my index species profile on Alto Lamprologus calvus or Alto Lamprologus compressorceps, you can watch that video right here. But if you haven't seen that video, I've tried a few different things with raising the fry to get better success rates, better survival rates with the fry. And this time I'm considering changing things up a little just to see what it does. Uh, I think that will benefit me. I, would, I will learn some things from it. And obviously it will benefit you guys just to see what the difference in survival rates will do. Obviously I don't wanna lose the spawn, but I'm thinking of just changing things up just to see what will happen. Again, if you've seen my other video, which is about uh, trying to get 100% survival rates with your calvus or compressorceps fry, uh, you can watch that video right here. I put sand bed in the tank, uh, really clean sand bed of crushed coral, and then put the fry in there. Because the fry sit on the sand bed, you wanna really have a very, very clean sand bed at, for the, at least the first two months of their life. Calvus fry like to hop off the sand bed. And because they're sitting on the sand bed so much, they could possibly develop infections. What I'm thinking about doing now with this sixth spawn is again, putting in a crushed coral sand bed, a very, very clean one, but also moving the female with the shell into that brand new fish tank letting her, seeing if she will raise the fry, seeing if the fry survival rate will be even better with her, with her fry. Obviously there is a risk that she could eat the fry. Uh, there is also a risk that when I put the female back in with the male, that he could bash her up because I might break the bond. But I think I might be okay. I've got a, I've got a feeling that when I put her back in the tank, if I do do this, I'm not saying I am going to do this, but if I do do decide to move the female out with the shell and the fry into the grow out tank, I do believe that the male and the female's bond will reform once I reintroduce her into the aquarium because calvus are fairly peaceful fish. So I might give that a go. It'd be interesting to see how the survival rate changes. Uh, if it improves, if it is a bad decision, I don't know, but I think we will all learn a lesson from that. And again, I'm not saying that all calvus will behave the same way as my calvus. Um, this is something I'm considering with this six batch of fry. So we'll see how they go. And you can see there, mate, the male has not moved pretty much the entire time I've talked about this aquarium. The female is in that shell. And yeah, I'm expecting to see the fry. If I do not move the female out of this tank with the shell, I'm expecting to see fry in the next few days. But yeah. That's the breeding pair of my white Autolamprologus calvus. And the next tank getting an update is this one. And if you're familiar with Lake Tanganyika and Cichlids, you will recognize, or hopefully recognize what these fish are. And they are Neolamprologus leilupi. These are my fry from my beautiful breeding pair that I have. Uh, they're really starting to color up now. I'm not sure how many I have in this aquarium. There are at least two to three different generations in this aquarium. And yeah, some of them are starting to push, the largest ones starting to push an inch. They're not quite at the sellable size yet, but they're doing really, really well. Uh, I really wanted to get them out of their old breeding tank where they were born because uh, they, there was, that tank has black contact paper on both sides and the rear, as well as that tank was pretty much bare bottom and it had black neoprene for the base instead of white styrofoam. And my concern with all that was because the fryer were growing up in such a dark tank that they would just be dark Leilupi. They'd grow up to be dark, almost brown Leilupi, which you really don't want with your Leilupi. You want that bright yellow, that bright orange color that Leilupi, beautiful Leilupi typically have. 
and thankfully I've been able to move these guys into a bare bottom tank which has white styrofoam as the base. So that's reflecting up to them, and brightening them up even more and does not have black contact paper or paint on either side of the aquarium. The only pane of glass that has black on it is the very, very back. And as you can see, it's a small part of the aquarium. Uh, it's only one inch wide by 14 inches high. And that is all that has black in this aquarium. So because of that, these guys are coloring up beautifully. You can see they're doing really well. And I love watching this tank, just like the calvus. And when they school together, they look awesome, all moving in one big group. So in this aquarium, you can see I don't have much in terms of uh, rocks uh, in shelf for shelter for these guys. I basically have PVC pipes for them to hide in, just like the shell dwelling cichlids. And uh, I have one stone at the back that's basically holding uh, that uh, sponge filter in place because these sponge filters are quite cheap off eBay. The suction cups don't last too long and they like to lift up and uh, float to the top of the aquarium. Having Placing a rock at the back just holds them in place and they won't move around. So that's my solution for those poor suction cups. Uh, but yeah, these guys are quite fine in this aquarium with, uh, without too many uh, rock structures for them. The reason I have that is because again, the darker rocks might uh, make the lay loopy darken up. Having white PVC uh, provides them shelter and it being white also helps them keep their nice bright color as well. And that's why I have left the PVC in the aquarium. The other benefit of having PVC in the aquarium over rocks is that when it comes to catching fry to sell to customers or to your cichlid club, it's very, very easy to catch a fry. You're not gonna stress them out too much by trying to chase them around all the rocks in the aquarium. You just put the net in, scoop some out, and happy days, you've caught some Leilupi fry to sell to other hobbyists. These guys are born at the start of 2021. Uh, in January 2021, it's now June 2021, and you can see the size that they have put on. Uh, quite quick, they loopy aren't the quickest growers in the cichlid world, um, but uh, they've gotten to the one inch size within about six months, so there you go. I've got two breeding pairs in my fish room. Uh, when I bought four, I was hoping to at least get uh, one pair out of them, and thankfully I was able to sex two pairs from the adults that I picked at the aquarium shop. So I was really, really pleased about that. And uh, the other pair still are in a two foot tank uh, by themselves. They are spawning frequently as well. Uh, however, the male of that pair seems to eat the fry. And I'm trying to get him used to having fry in the aquarium with him. And I'm just letting that pair do what they do so they can learn how to look after their fry. And that seems to be working. So the first two spawns that they had, uh, the male unfortunately ate all the fry. However, with the third spawn, they had some fry that I was able to pull out and uh, save when the female was wanting to spawn for the fourth time, I had to pull them out because she was chasing them around the tank. She wasn't eating them, but that she was chasing them around the tank. So they're on their fourth spawn right now. And again, I'm gonna leave the fry with the male, with the female, just let them do their thing. Hopefully they will catch on to what they do, they improve their parental instincts rather than constantly taking the fry away from their parents. Try to develop that bond between the parents as well as with their own fry. So I suggest you guys do that as well. Obviously it's a little disheartening to see the parents eat their own fry, but you want them to learn, let them mature, let them learn what they're meant to do, and hopefully uh, they will work it all out and be better parents for it. So uh, in the long run, it will benefit you and them. So there you have it guys, my June 2021 Fish Room Update Tour. I really hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please hit the thumbs up, comment, and subscribe buttons. I really would appreciate it. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap this video up now. Thanks heaps for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.